every single year since he has been the leader of the opposition. Thousands of dollars are passed in this parliament for an office for the leader of the opposition. The question that people must ask him, is there any office? And what happened to the money? That is what should be asked of him. Is there any office for the leader of the opposition? Where money has been voted for every single year in this parliament, and what happened to the money? Where the money going? Oh, there is also, Mr. Speaker, an office to be paid for, a secretary to be paid for. Where is the secretary? And I can tell you, the money goes out of the treasury every single month. There's no secretary. There's no office. But every single month, the money goes out of the secretary, out of the office out of the treasury, sorry, for that secretary, for that office. But where's the secretary? And then they talk about corruption and talk about cutting back on people's salary. Eh? He is responsible for the secretary. Where is the secretary working? Where is the money that is being collected from the treasury for the secretary? I want to be very clear. And I'm hopeful that one of them publishes my statement as I'm expressing it. I am fed up with the antics of Dr. Denzel Douglas as our Prime Minister. I had to leave Parliament yesterday because I had to go abroad for a meeting. I am currently speaking to you from abroad. And that is the only reason that I was not there. And it is cowardice, in my view, to level these types of accusations at me and to seek to tarnish my reputation and seek to sully that reputation in my absence and behind my back. Were I there, I do not believe the Prime Minister could have been so crazy as to make those types of suggestions. I wish to go on a record to say that in relation to his suggestions that I am somehow collecting monies for an office and for a secretary on a monthly basis, that the Prime Minister is being pathologically mendacious in those statements. And he knows that he's not telling the truth. We would have heard in Parliament yesterday, the Honorable Sam Conder, in effect, call him to his face, a liar. And I am saying to you today, Tony, while that language is not the kind of language that I would normally use, I am concerned at the pathological way in which our Prime Minister continues to misrepresent the position to the people of this country. Now, let me make it clear that I have not collected ever since I've been in the position of leader of the opposition any monies whatsoever for any office of the leader of the opposition. As a matter of fact, this is a matter that I have raised in the past with the clerk to ask him about whether or not something can be put in place so that I could be afforded the courtesy of having an office. Insofar as a secretary is concerned, when I became leader of the opposition, replacing the late great Malcolm Bichard, I met in place an arrangement where Malcolm Bichard had an assistant who was being paid by the federal government. I have not sought to drop that arrangement, and therefore that arrangement has continued, and that individual render services to me on an as-needed basis. That is the extent of the position, and that individual's check is made out to that individual. That money does not come to me. It has never come to me. And, Tony, I'm particularly upset that the Prime Minister would level these types of charges and be allowed to level these types of charges against a parliamentarian who is absent because I had in my possession when I was in Parliament my pay slips, if you will, because whatever payment is made to parliamentarians, a slip is produced. And as soon as I get back in country, I will make those slips available to the media because those slips will show that I get a salary and I get a constituency allowance. That is the extent of what I have received. And so if the prime minister as minister of finance is paying out money for an office, then he must come to the public and bring the evidence that he's paying it. 
and I am being very, very clear about this, that the next occasion I'm in Parliament, I will be demanding a formal apology from him, and he must be made to apologize. He cannot continue to lie to the country in this manner and sully the reputation of decent people. He's pathologically mendacious, and he has to stop.